Hey folks, Alan Mandica, Hot Rod Hippie here. This week's video is answering a viewer question. The question, what tool should I invest in first when I'm getting into metal shaping and auto restoration? Rather than just answer this question myself, I posed it to metal shapers and fabricators from across the industry, people I trust their opinion, I look up to their work, I thought you folks would be interested in either checking out what they have to say or getting a range of opinions. So let's check it out. So while I was at SEMA 2018, I posed this question to numerous folks trying to gather up a bunch of opinions. I'd hoped to get a few more fabricators in on this in the past few months in my travels, and unfortunately I haven't had a chance to. But you still got five opinions other than my own that you can go ahead and look at, check out, and see what they have to say. We've got Ron Covell, Bryson Smith, Mike Wagner, Chris Runge, and Jamie Jordan in this video. So you can check out what they say about tools and where you should start out in this business. Just a quick disclaimer, unfortunately the audio in this video is not as good as I would have liked it to have been. My audio solution for SEMA coverage in 2018, I wish it could have been a little bit better. I'm really gonna work on that for 2019 coverage, believe me. I'm gonna focus on making that one of my improvements for 2019 SEMA coverage. One quick note, everybody I asked this question to made a really solid point that this is a really broad question. Depending on your application, exactly what you're trying to do with metal shaping or getting into auto restoration, things like that, this can really depend on your scenario. But we all answered this to the best of our ability with the broad question asked. So without further ado, I pose this question to these folks. What are the first tools you should invest in when you're getting into metal shaping and auto restoration? Let's see what they have to say. I do get asked a lot, what tools should people start with? And there's not just one answer to that. But let me start with a direction that's probably different from what some other people would say. I'd say a good air compressor is really the place to start because so many of the tools we use are run by air power. And a lot of people buy cheap compressors that break down after a couple of years, and then they wish they'd bought a better one. So I think that might be a good way to start. That is excellent point I did not thought about. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've suffered through that before in the past, right? so that's definitely a very good point. All right, cool. Yeah. If you got a, a half power compressor from Sears with aluminum cylinders, it's probably not going to last for the long run. Yeah, especially running the grinders, the DAs. If you want to start getting into any shaping tools, forget it. So. Sure, right. Yeah. And then moving past that, I really think that getting a good set of hammers and dollies is a good investment. So many people buy the cheapest ones they can, which come out of Asia, and they're made of cast iron, and they don't hold up well. So that would be another good place to start. I'd say uh, one of the best ways of getting into it is just buy what you can afford. I mean, just kind of really think about that. Think about what you're investing your money in and just kind of buy what you can afford at the time and not be scared to upgrade later. Or really just, you know, hone your, as your skills change and as you get, as you realize that, and you will as you keep working, don't be afraid to kind of change things up or try to buy a new tool or try to really chase after it. I mean, I think that's the best advice I can give is just don't stop trying to learn. I think that's for me. I think for me, uh, the basics of metal shaping is a good hammer and dolly set. Uh, you pretty much, no matter what you do, whether you're you wheel on a panel, planch hammer a panel, all that kind of stuff, you still have to weld it in, and there's still going to be fine-tuned hammer and dolly at that point, and uh, you can't get any more basic than that. Um, a basic small English wheel and, and uh, like a shop bag setup is is a good you know good starter for actual metal shaping. Um, after that, you know, then when you start to learn things, you can then add on to your tool collection from there. So. And just as a point, you guys have the discovery kit, you have beginner metal shaping kits available for people, so if, yeah. if they were interested, you could pick that up. And that's not just you giving this opinion, because that's the company you work for, but that is just a Definitely. good starting point. Well, and I, I actually, I personally picked out the metal shaper starter kit because I was thinking the same lines of, you know, if you're looking to get into it, you know, what do you need? Well, we have a basic kit that comes with a shrinker stretcher, comes with a English wheel, uh, comes with a uh, three-piece hammer and dolly set, uh, three of each, three hammers, three dollies, and then uh, a shop bag set up and also some tin snips. So um, it's just pretty much the basics of metal shaping tools. So, um, yeah. Uh, I think for getting into this industry, the best starter kit for, you know, entry level hobbyists or, you know, people that just want to pursue this craft as a career, I think the best thing they can get, you know, to start shaping is a good set of hammers and dollies. You know, they don't have to be, you know, the top of the line snap on. I mean, you know, you can get Martin tools relatively cheap. Go to flea markets and swap meets try to track that down uh, for shaping wise you know I think a good mallet set and you know a stump or a sandbag would be a great start to show you how to shape and kind of how to build from there and then you can increase yeah so when I 
started, I just had basic, what I would call basic hand tools. I did have an English wheel, um, and most of my forming was done by stretching. So there's two ways to move metal, really, stretching and, and gathering or shrinking. So in the sense of, of trying to create a compound curve, I would say uh, a leather shot bag that you fill with birdshot, um, a good bossing mallet, and then uh, an affordable English wheel. And the thing that I would direct people to do uh, with the English wheel is to make sure your anvils are polished because it's going to make a world of difference in your finish. Yeah. So now you've had five solid opinions on where you should be looking when it comes to investing in tools and equipment for getting into metal shaping, auto restoration. I really want to thank those folks who took their time to go ahead and be part of this video. They were all really courteous and really helped me out with this. So thank you so much to everybody involved. So if you've been on my channel for a while, you've watched my channel for a while, you probably know what my answer to this question is. What is it? Hammers and dollies. High quality hammers and dollies are worth the weight in gold in my opinion. Whether it's Snap-on or Martin Tools, they are just great tools. They're gonna last you a lifetime, they'll probably last generations if you take care of them. Personally, I quite like the Martin Tools. They're a great balance of both price and function. They're high quality USA made tools. A little inside information for you, Snap-on hammers are made by Martin Tools. They are different designs, but they are made by Martin Tools. If you invest the money in these quality tools that are gonna hold up, they're gonna hold a nice surface face on them, they're gonna last while you're hammering on welds, on, on harder materials, these things are just gonna keep working and keep doing the job properly. And if you're done with them at the end of the project and you find that you're not really getting into more metal shaping projects, maybe it's not for you, you can turn around and sell them and they're gonna hold their value. I always look for quality used to hammers so I can modify them or change them. I still want a quality tool, but maybe I don't wanna buy a brand new one so I can go ahead and cut one end of it off or something like that. There is a good used market out there for these things. Swap meets, eBay, Craigslist, you can sell these hammers if you end up not using them later on. All right, folks, that's going to wrap this video up. I hope you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of it. This is definitely a different type of video than I might normally do, but I think it's going to become a series where I ask either your questions or just questions that I think are important to this business to numerous people, folks that I trust, people's opinions I want to hear, and I think you do too. Go ahead and drop the video a like if you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of this. Check out my Patreon account at patreon.com slash hotrodhippie. It really helps out to create content for you folks and subscribe to keep up to date with new videos every week. Thanks for coming around, folks.